I'm just kidding, this is empty. I had that drink yesterday. If you want to try it yourself, I've put the recipe in the description box. So hello future me and all you wonderful people out there watching. Happy December! So I have a question for you. Are you the kind of person who thinks that The Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween film or a Christmas film? Or why not both? So then you've got three whole months to watch the stop motion animated masterpiece. So today I'm going to be making some Nightmare Before Christmas Maya earrings. So I didn't get footage of everything that I did in the process for this. I swear I did, I must have just deleted it off the memory card before I had a chance to transfer it to the computer for editing. So I will attempt to talk you through the bits that I have missed out and hopefully it will all still make sense. But before we get to the tutorial, I just wanted to uh, point out these earrings that I bought. They're from a little shop called Famjo Boutique, they're in the UK and even though they're not quite on season right now, when I saw them I just had to buy them. So I just wanted to just quickly mention them because I thought that these were cute and I really wanted to show them off. So like I said, there's some bits missing from the tutorial in terms of footage. But anyway, I started off just by making some quick sketches in my little notebook of how I wanted his face to, to look. And then to get that face shape, I used the technique from my Halloween craft video where I made the cauldron hair clips and I used a felt shape to needle felt onto in order to have a base. So that's what I did with the mayor's face. I started off with a, a yellow piece of felt that I felted onto. The idea behind that was I would then know I had the right thickness if you couldn't see the yellow and then also, when I got to sewing the two sides together, I would know that I'd done it right if you couldn't see any yellow on the side, but it was a bit too bulky so I did end up cutting that off and it came off really easily with just a, a craft knife. Now let's get to the bit that I do have footage for. We're making the spiders. I've got a silicone mould that I've used for resins. Please excuse the mess in it. So this mould has pairs of different sized shapes and so I picked two of the right size that I needed and pressed some black polymer clay into them and I carefully used a straight blade that I have for my polymer clay to cut off as much of the excess as I could flush against the level of the mould and then very carefully popped them out. Once I'd done that then I eyeballed a smaller circle for the spider's head the method that I did with this was to make one full sphere of polymer clay but like a really small dot and then cut that in half so then I had a flat cabochon type piece and it could bake on that flat side. Then I moved on to making the spider's legs. I used one of the rolling guides that I have to help roll out this one long continuous piece of polymer clay then I just laid it down onto my drawing to make sure it got the correct length. Then I used that one piece as a guide to cut out the rest of the legs for that middle leg. Then I repeated this for the other two legs. Once I had all of my different lengths, I then placed them on the drawing and carefully followed that bend in the leg and pinched it in place. Once all these were done, I put them on a baking tray to put in the oven and I just baked them at the manufacturer's guidelines, which for this Fimo soft polymer clay was, I believe, 120 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. That's what I baked them at anyway. And they came out perfectly fine. So this is how all the pieces look now that they're baked. So let's put one of them together. You'll see that the legs are a little bit too long, so I just need to go through and cut off all the excess. I'm just going to use a piece of acrylic to put over my template so that I can protect that drawing from any damage and just use a little craft knife to cut off the excess length from the legs. Now I've got some 320 grit wet and dry sandpaper, just using that to 
sand down the backs of the head and the body piece. There's a bit of flashing on the body piece from the mould. So I'm just going to sand that down so it sits nice and flush on the shirts later on. I'm also going to sand down one of the sides of both the head and body piece so that they sit nicer together. You'll see that they don't sit very flush together. They look a bit like a, a snowman. So I just sand it down and they sit together very nicely. I'm gonna just check how the legs all fit on before I glue them all together with a bit of super glue. I did have to cut some slivers of the legs off so that they would fit together nicer. I then took one of the spiders and used it to redraw the template for the mayor's shirt. I drew around one of the face shapes just to get that shape laid down and then I used the spider to outline the area where like, that would sit so I would know how much room I had left to create the collar. So this is just a rough sketch, I do neaten it up a bit and make it more symmetrical. So the green pen is the shape of that base of his shirt. You'll notice that I want to sandwich the top of that shirt between the two sides of his face. And the orange pen is what I want his collar to look like. Now I'm going to write on this collar piece fold but we're just going to ignore that I don't actually put this on the fold it was just an idea that I had that I would create this collar piece that would wrap around the sides of the shirt and create this collar but it turned out way more complicated than I thought it would so I scrapped that idea and just used that shape to create the collar out of four separate pieces so this is the neater version I'm just placing the face shape on top and a spider just to see how it looks so I know that I've got the right shape now that I've neatened it up make sure that it's still going to work and here is that collar piece so I do right fold on this but just ignore it I just used that shape to put out four pieces for each side of the face and this is what it looks like hopefully you can see what I've done the green pieces I cut out two of those sewed them together turned them inside out and then each of those collar pieces I sewed two together turned them inside out then sewed them onto that base shirt piece to make it look like it was a collar the stitches will get covered up by the mare's face a little later on next up is to glue the little spiders onto the little shirts I'm just using some E6000 glue and I'm using um, my little awl to pick up a blob of it and to spread it on nice and thin all over the bottoms of those spiders. And then I'm placing them onto the collars and using some fabric clips to hold them in place. Fortunately, the clips didn't do any damage to the spiders. I was quite worried that the pressure of them would break or bend the legs, but fortunately they did absolutely nothing and they worked perfectly. So the face, I have traced the face design that I wanted to on this shape and then drew the face features on and then cut those out. I wanted to make sure that I had this that I could use as a template and then also these pieces that I could use as a template. The plan is for now I'm going to focus on the nose and the mouth and I'm going to use my very thin craft felt. The plan is I'm going to cut out the mouth on this blue stuff because it's very close to the colour of the mare's mouth. I think I'm going to experiment with colouring this felt using alcohol markers to see if I can get it more accurate and then I will cut out a slightly smaller version of that mouth onto black felt so then I can glue the black felt onto the blue felt and I will embroider the teeth in. I think that's probably the best way to go. I think if I try and make lots of small triangle teeth out of felt, it's not going to work. Okay, so the two mouth pieces have been cut out and I 
just need to test my thirst method, which was colouring it with alcohol ink markers just to get the colour more accurate to the photo reference that I'm using. So I'm using some Winsor & Newton Pro markers. This first colour is B138 and the second colour is CG1, which is a cool grey colour. And then the last colour that I tried was C917. So I don't actually use this method, but I thought I'd leave it in here so you can see my thought processes and all the mistakes that I make. So even though none of them are exactly the same, I went for that blue colour because it seemed to have the best result. So I just coloured those felt pieces in. Then next up was to cut out the smaller mouth pieces with black felt. Okay, so I have some paint and I'm gonna paint the teeth and darken the lips a little bit with some acrylic paint because I realized that because I'm using felt and an alcoholic marker, this isn't drying and I kind of feel like if it was to get wet, the color will run out of the felt and lead onto the felt base of the face. So it's probably not a good idea to just use alcohol markers. So I'm gonna water down that blue paint and I'm going to mix a little of that medium flesh color into the white to have a teeth color and we'll give that a go. We'll use a nice little brush and paint that on. So like I said, I didn't use the alcohol markers to colour the blue felt. I ended up watering down some blue paint and used that to apply a wash to the felt to give it a bit of colour. And the pointy teeth for his mouth, I needed to make a colour that wasn't white. So I mixed some white with a peach colour and some yellow and it gave me a nice natural teeth colour to use. And I just painted those teeth on. So I started in the middle so that I could make sure I could get the correct number of teeth and I could fit all of them in evenly. If I'd started in at one side and tried to work my way across, I would have probably found myself trying to force the last few teeth into a too small space and it would just look really weird and wonky. So starting from the middle was a good idea. So a quick roundup of the things that I've done so far. Glued the nose onto his set side. The teeth are dry, I just need to glue those onto the mouth using some E6000. And then the spiders all glued onto the little shirts. And I've added some eyes and that little red dot onto the backs. So I'm using that template of the face to make sure I'm getting the features into the right places. So I'm just putting the features in place over those spaces, holding them down and then pulling that paper template up over, if that makes any sense. And then I'm using some E6000 glue to glue them down. Right, so the eyes on his negative side of his face, they are shaded with a bit of blue around them to add some dimension, I guess. So I've taken some white felt shapes, I've added a layer of white acrylic paint to add as a kind of primer to stop the paint from soaking in too much. I took that blue wash and added some white paint to it so I've got a nice pale blue colour and I'm just going to see what happens when I apply it and hope, hopefully it'll uh, do what I would like it to and help me shape the eyes for for this side of the face and I'll make sure when I do this that the eyes are the right way up I'm also working off a reference picture from the movie so I'm not sure you can really see the blue going down onto the eyes here but this is just that first coat of paint I do go in with a different shade of blue adding some more dimension to his eyes and you'll see that I paint the eyeballs in pink and you don't see uh, the bit after where I paint a lighter pink to add some details into the eyes as well but I do show you a close-up of this a bit later on so hopefully you'll see what I mean at that point
so I'm gonna get started on the happy side of the face. I've only cut out one eye because I've decided I will embroider that eye on and maybe paint it as well. Because if you look at this, which is a picture of the actual prop from the movie, you can see some yellow being used to highlight the uh, spiral of the eye and then also on that little curve above and below the other eye. So I'm gonna put it all together on the this side of the face and decide whether I want to paint some yellow. I'll make a decision when I get to it on whether or not it's going to be paint or embroidery, but I'm definitely going to apply that spiral directly to that this side of the face rather than creating a felt shape and then sticking that on. So we've got to the happy side now and I don't have all the clips of this so I'll just talk you through the things that I've done off camera. So the mouth is just some white felt that has been painted the right colour and I'm just gluing it down here. And with the teeth I just did the same thing that I did on the sad side of his face where I painted the teeth onto some black felt. This is about three layers of white paint and I was going to do the details of each teeth with embroidery but it just didn't look right so that got pulled out and I painted teeth on. The embroidery just made it look too stiff I guess and the paint helped make it look more cartoony which was an element I wanted to try and preserve. So I'm trying to be as neat as possible and then following the reference for the picture to make sure that they're going at the right angles and actually look like his teeth. So I've taken a bit of time to paint the details on the eyes. I'm going to glue them to the face before I add the pupils so that I make sure they're both in the same place and looking in the same direction. So the smiley mouth is glued on, just need to do the eyes. I'm waiting for some paint to dry on one of the eye walls and then I need to figure out how I want to do the spiral on the other side of his face. Once these are completely dry, we'll have to glue those onto the face and then it's just figuring out how to do the line work around the features. Because if you look at this prop from the actual movie, you'll notice that there's lines around the eyes and the mouth. And it's a really, I think it's a really cool design feature. So they were able to swap out those little pieces for different types of mouth and eye pieces to give different expressions to make him say different words. And they incorporated that into the design of the character, which I think is really interesting. So I definitely want to make sure that I add that to the actual earrings that I'm making. Yeah, so I just need to decide for this eye. Do I want to embroider it on or do I want to paint it on? I think I'm going to go with embroidery just because the felt that I've been using to paint on has been quite difficult because there's still a lot of fibre in that that isn't completely felted into the felt and it's even worse on the needle felted pieces that I've done. So in order to have it look nice and neat, I think it's going to have to be embroidery. So this eye on his good side of his face, I used some of the blue felt and just painted that shadow detail and the yellow pupil and, and just added more depth to the shadow to make it pop a bit more. Then that got glued in place with E6000 and now I'm just embroidering around the eyes, adding the details, just using a back stitch and some sewing machine thread. So I'm trying to eyeball the spiral eye that he has. So I do try to draw it on with some pencil but it doesn't quite show up. 
I did have to go back and remove some stitches just to make sure it was looking exactly how I wanted it to. Also Tim Burton's spirals tend to have like a, a certain look to them which is what I wanted to try and imitate here so I had to be very careful and making sure that parts of the lines were slightly thicker than the others and just get it to look right. So just to catch up on a few of the things that I did off camera, I've sewn the lines around his features and I decided not to disguise the fact that these were stitched on. I kind of liked that textural look of making it obvious because of how they were utilised in the actual prop on the film. I've also glued the collar on and now I'm just using a kind of ladder stitch to sew the two sides of his face together. It's not a, a straight up and down stitch. I put the needle through the felt at an angle Okay, so next up is the hat. So I took an image of the hat that was in scale for my earrings and drew around it to create my template and I copied this onto some black fabric and cut out four pieces obviously for the front and back. So to stop the fabric from fraying on the hat pieces I used some fray check around the edges. It dries nice and matte, it's not shiny and it just stops any threads from coming out and looking messy. But as you can tell just using those pieces of fabric would be too thin so I used some felt to sandwich between those two pieces of fabric just to bulk it up a little bit. So I cut out three layers of black felt and I cut out a shape in the bottom of each layer which would make room for the head and glued each of those pieces together so it was one thick piece of felt. Then once that had dried I glued on one of the hat pieces, I used the mayor's face to make sure I was getting the level of the hat right and then cut around that hat so that the felt was the right shape. Then I used a needle and thread to sew the mayor's head into his hat. Ideally I would have liked to have added a like mechanism in hidden inside his hat where I could switch his face around whilst I was wearing the earrings so I would have cut a channel in the middle of the felt to make room for something that could like turn whilst I was wearing them but I have left it so that if I find the ideal thing to use I can just remove the hat and create another version of it and put it back together again. One thing I wish I did was use a different type of glue to glue the fabric part of the hat onto the felt. I used some E6000 and it seems to have sunk through the fibres of the fabric and it's kind of made it a bit shiny in places but I think I can fix that by painting over it which I think I'm probably going to do. Right now I haven't done it, you'll see at the end if I've done that or not. So one deviation from the film that I have done is to make his hat significantly shorter. So he has he has a, a little Quaker's hat. I, I only made it smaller because of how ridiculously tall his hat is in the movie. I didn't think there'd be any way that I could make reasonably sized earrings whilst also having such a big hat. So I took creative liberties and made it a little bit smaller. And here they are, finally done. They took quite a while, mostly because I'm still working. I I haven't had any time off in the pandemic, so I'm still having to go to work. And these things just take time. I am sleepy most of the time, so crafting gets put on hold whilst I have naps. <laughs> but yeah, 
the um, hat is purposefully purposefully uh, a bit messy so that when I look at them in like a year's time or so I'll remember oh hey actually I wanted to do that thing where I made his head spin around so so I have some incentive to uh, make them look a bit nicer and as you can see they are huge I know I haven't got like I know I've got like a, a short neck <laughs> but still they are really big uh, but if I'd made them any smaller I don't think I would have had the patience to finish them these wouldn't have ended up being done but <laughs> oh, I just think they're really cool I'm actually quite pleased with how they've turned out so yeah I'm very happy oh so I'm hoping to have time to do a another craft this month I've been thinking about doing this one all year if you're a fan of the Muppets I'm going to be revisiting one of my old craft videos from a few years ago and hopefully I'm going to create creating a new version of, of those if you want to go check that out so yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see all of you wonderful people later. Bye! Happy December!